So let's look at our example. The position of some object is given by the following function. W of t, where w is our displacement and t is our time, is equal to 6.0 t squared times i hat plus 9.0 t cubed times j hat plus 2.0 times t times k hat. And the whole thing is given in meters. So our W is our displacement, and this equation gives us our displacement after some given amount of time. So let's say if we want to find our displacement vector after two seconds, we simply plug in a two and we solve for our displacement vector values. Now we can use this to find our magnitude as well as direction of our displacement vector. So let's go to part A. Determine velocity and acceleration functions given this above information. So let's recall what our definition is for the velocity vector and the acceleration vector in two and three dimensions. So in order to find my velocity vector function in three dimensions, I have to take my derivative of my displacement function w with respect to time. Likewise, to find my acceleration vector function um, in three dimensions, I have to take my derivative of the velocity function. So, notice I'm given my displacement function. If I take my derivative with respect to time, that will give me my velocity function, and then I can use that velocity function to find my acceleration function. So, let's do exactly that. So, my uh, velocity or instantaneous velocity vector equals my derivative of this whole function. So, I take this and plug it, in my, and plug it into my W, and I get the following result. In the next step, I essentially distribute this derivative to each x component, y component, and my z component because this vector is in three dimensions. So I get the following result. So I have to take my derivative of the x component with respect to time, my derivative of the y component with respect to time, and finally my derivative of the z component vector with respect to time. So I get the following result. My derivative of 6 times t squared is 12t. My derivative of 9 times t cubed is 27t squared. And, and finally, my derivative of 2 times t is simply 2. So this is my velocity function. In other words, for any given time, if I plug in a t, I will get my velocity vector at that given moment, at that instant in time. Now let's find my instantaneous acceleration vector. So I simply take what I obtained from this part and plug it into my, uh, my V here. And I get the following result. Now I take my, I distribute my derivative to the X, Y, and Z component. And I take my derivative of each component as shown here. And I get the derivative of 12 T is 12. Derivative of 27t squared is 54t, and my derivative of 2 is 0. So that means my acceleration vector function is, has an x component, a y component, and the z component is 0. So I can look at it as if it only had two directions, because it has no direction along the x-axis, uh, along the z-axis. So. Let's find my part B. Determine vectors V and A at two seconds. So I want to find my magnitude of those vectors as well as the actual position of that vector. So we essentially take what we obtained from part A for my velocity vector. So I, get, I take this and I plug in my 2 for the t's and I get 12 times 2 times i hat plus 27 times 2 squared, so 4 times j hat, plus 2.0. Since we have no t, this remains at 2.0. And I get 12 times 2 is 24 i hat, plus 27 times 4 is 108, so that's j hat, plus 2.0 times k hat. 
So this is my vector at 2 or my velocity vector at 2 seconds. To find my magnitude, I simply use the formula. So I get 24 squared plus 108 squared plus 2 squared. Take the radical of the whole thing, add the guys up, and I get approximately 111 meters is my magnitude, my length of my vector. So if I have my x, y, z axis, where the z axis is coming out of the board, my vector will look like this. It will begin at the point 0, 0, 0, and will end at the point 24, comma, 108, comma, 2, where 24 is my distance along the x axis, 108 is my distance along the y axis, and 2 is my distance along the z axis. So, now let's find my acceleration vector at 2 seconds. So once again, I take what I obtained from part A, I take this guy here, and now I plug in my 2 seconds into the T. So notice my 12 has no T, so it remains the same. I have no K, so my K is 0. And 54 times 2 gives us 108. So I have the following result. My acceleration vector at 2 seconds is equal to 12 i hat plus 108, 108 j hat. We have no k hat. So we have no z component. Now to find my magnitude of my acceleration, we simply once again take my radical of the sum of the squares and I get approximately 108 meters per second cubed. Now, by the way, this shouldn't be meters, this should be meters per second because we're looking at velocity and not displacement.